Hey folks, this is Matt Rainwater here, and today we're gonna, y'all are gonna be able to sit down and watch me just make a whole panel from start to finish, I think. Unless I feel like I need to stop at some point, but um, yeah, that's the plan. Today we're gonna, I have to make an editation for an insert into a panel um, that I'm currently working on. I'm about to be done making uh, episode, what is this, 53. Oh my gosh, 53. So, excuse me one moment. <clears throat> I, I swear I don't have the coronavirus. I promise. I don't think I can transmit it to you through the internet. Um, you might want to de, you might want to sanitize your speakers just in case. I don't know. Uh, anyway, I hope all of y'all are doing well and are healthy and are taking best precautions during this time. I know that it can be really scary, um, what, with there being a global pandemic and whatnot, but, uh, I don't know. I've listened to a lot of experts talk about the matter and I think we're all going to get through it, especially if you're of a particular health range or age range such as you know near my I'm 34 so should be all right apparently according to the statistics uh, as f if you're near my age range if you're 34 between the ages 30 and 35 and you have parents uh, who are still alive um, check in on them they certainly are at risk for some of the complications that come from the COVID-19, uh, whatever you want to call it, pandemic, virus, influenza, problem. Um, anyway, like I was saying, I hope y'all are all doing well, staying safe, able to um, hang out with your loved ones, maybe also just getting a breather. I'm not. <laughs> but I don't care. I mean, the world is like, oh, we, we won't be able to leave our rooms or our houses or go out and involve ourselves. And I'm just like, that's me. That's my life. <laughs> uh, <laughs> welcome to my life. But um, all right, so let's get started. And I'm going to, I'm going to, first of all, switch over into tablet mode here so my apologies if it's if the artist cam is getting wild getting confusing uh let's see if i can just just a little bit make sure that the camera can see me uh i'm just gonna check real quick looks all right okay here we go so I'm in Clip Studio, and I'm going to start by getting my rectangular panel frame here. Actually, don't. I mean, it can be whatever size. I'm just going to reduce it. It's a very basic panel that I'm inserting. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail. It's not even really a panel. It's basically like an image on a TV screen. And originally, I drew, I drew the wrong image. It wasn't what I intended in the script, and I forgot. And so I was writing out the script today, and I looked. And by script, I mean, like, it's thumbnails and dialogue together. I don't really, like, write out a script when I'm initially planning uh, an episode. I will thumbnail an episode and then write some dialogue. But then after I'm done making all the visuals... I will then r completely write out the dialogue before I go to lettering. So that's what I'm doing today, and I'm taking this little this little pause to uh, make sure that one of these images is correct and what I want it. So let's see here. I'm trying to figure out what kind of pose I want because it's going to be basically like.
Hmm. Yeah. I'm trying not to give away too much about what I'm thinking here. Because <laughs> it's a spoiler thing. I'm like, maybe I should just... Okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to make... Because originally I was like, oh, I'm going to go with a pre-established character, but I'm going to actually just kind of make up a character. Kind of, sort of. And I want this pose to be like a bravado type pose because it's somebody who's feeling victorious. Um, and this character is going to be an old pirate. I'm also, I have music playing and I don't think the microphone can pick it up, but for some reason I feel the need to check because I don't, don't want YouTube to pull this off because of copyright stuff. Um, all right, I already know I need to move that. So yeah. He's gonna have thumb these gesture drawings always look kinda rough. Not excited about <laughs> not excited about how the gesture's looking right now. But it'll I promise y'all it'll shape up. I promise. Give this guy some kind of a pirate hat. I think I want to stick a feather in that cap. I'm just like... Right now, I'm just putting in, like, the most important features of the character, the things that sort of define them. Uh... All right. And then I need to figure out some, some things about this guy's. What is what is he wearing? Is he wearing anything? <laughs> I think I am gonna go for something kind of weird, like overalls. <laughs> uh, or not even really overalls, like half overalls. No shirt. I I want to go for something really goofy and kind of absurd for this. Because uh, it's just a little tiny thing. So I, I want it to have like a little an element of being kind of a gag. Um, I say kind of a gag. It is a gag. So now all of the main elements are established and now I need to uh, now I need to refine details. Um, so I think at this point I'm probably ready to go from rough drawing to refined drawing. So I'm going to Pull back the opacity of that last layer, and I'm going to make a new layer, and I'm drawing over that layer to do refined pencils. Um, 
And refined pencils are exactly that. I'm just refining what I did in the previous panel. And I'm already seeing some things established in my gesture that I want to adjust and fix because they don't quite I don't know, they don't look right. They're not like in a very particularly good perspective. Um, but for instance, the straps on this side, there we go. Yeah, I think that looks better than what I had previously. Gosh, I suddenly had this thought. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna retrace because I had this thought. I kind of want to make this captain, this like pirate captain, a little pudgier. Like give him a pot belly. Yes. Uh, I'm gonna go down to the layer below to do this. Um. Find that. So I'm gonna have to change. I'm gonna have to change the placement of these straps to actually conform to his more rotund stomach. Yeah, I like that actually a lot better. It adds more humor to the character. Um, let's see here. good mostly um where to start I'm gonna s I guess I'm gonna start on the face now <laughs> give him some earring better to find those cheek the cheekbone area And I think I'm going to do something different with this character's nose. Um, but I'm not sure what yet. Maybe I'm just going to not do anything different with the nose. Uh, I do want it to be bulbous. Actually, that looks good. Okay. Cool. That looks good. I'm just trying to figure out how to what I can do to sort of accentuate that this character is a little bit older. So I think that's working though. Uh, something that uh, here's a general tip: rounder features would certainly rounder features sort of help make a character look older if that's what you're trying to go for um well at least in certain places um no i guess everywhere really rounder I mean rounder sort of implies softer um more worn that's not always true but within the case of like my own visual language uh rounder generally a apply uh, implies not replies rounder generally implies that uh, a character's features are softer or or what <laughs> i was like or no i mean that's exactly what it means um there's nothing else to it and um i really thought that that was a deeper thought than it is and it really isn't so take of that what you will. All right, so we got the hat. I 
feather just doesn't look right. I'm going to do it differently. That doesn't look right either. Oh, see, I want it. I don't know. I want this feather to point straight up. I know that like typically a feather would kind of droop, uh, but no, I think that's going to work. I think that'll work fine. Hmm. Yeah, I was just like, maybe the lobe of the other ear should appear. That doesn't, I don't know, I don't like the way that looks. I guess that looks all right. It really changes the silhouette, though, the character. So that's why I'm, no, I'm not going to go with that. Um, I will, however, add some more cheek right there okay um i think this arm is gonna have to be shorter to navigate that one. Okay. Looking pretty good. I'm feeling mostly happy with it. I was just, I don't know, not feeling particularly. See, would it look better if I just, if, instead of trying to make these straps conform to the body, if I just like did them as, I feel like that would look better. I'm not gonna lie. Um, all right. It looks kind of better. Yeah, I'm going to go with that. I might have to end up adjusting it. Again, when I go to inks. But it looks better than what I had previously. Ah, that's... <laughs> this picture is going to be ending up... It's going to end up being so small that... I'm almost like, why even spend this much time with it? But... I'm having fun with the drawing. That's why. <laughs> uh, <laughs> maybe. No, I'm just. Oh, I want to put a sword. <laughs> I want to put a sword hilt. Just like right there. And a belt. Mmm. I guess if I did, yeah, I'm like, I'm going to improvise this belt here. I've, the last couple episodes, I've had to use a lot of reference and outside resources. And, uh, It's because um, the next episodes 52 all the way probably till 60 um, involve a lot of his like semi pseudo historical um, situations. And uh, I'm using it, you know, I'm using it as like a world building thing, but also it's. Um, it's a way to talk about the history of the characters of Pontu and Henry and Leah and uh, Lady Revenstone. 
And that's all I'm going to say about it because anything else would be divulging too much. For my comfort. <laughs> Maybe not for y'all. Maybe y'all want to know more. I just... I like keeping secrets and surprises when it comes to uh, stories. I've been thinking about that a lot lately because... Um, I'm wondering why that's particularly my my thing. I, I feel like younger generations don't seem as into that. Or even kids in my generation. I say kids. I don't know what else. Jeez. People in my generation. Um, yeah, I mean, even my generation is like, there's a lot of people who like to... Um, spoil things for themselves know what's going to happen especially like with stuff like star wars and uh things like game of thrones and i don't know i've always liked being surprised and not knowing what's going to happen and that stuff is always kind of exciting to me uh i'm so for example like i'm watching um i think this is done i'm watching the i'm watching season three of the castlevania series on netflix and it's all right but i'm enjoying it because i don't know anything that's going to happen in it and i like that it's nice <laughs> it's nice to have like surprises because there are some su there are some surprising things happening in uh this season of castlevania especially because like uh, I don't know if you, if you follow it at all. Uh, if you don't follow it at all, I'll try and be in your interest in watching it. I'll try and be a little bit mindful. But uh, the first two seasons of Castlevania go about as much as, you, you know, go about where you would expect them to go. Um, the people you would think that would be defeated are defeated. And the end of season two leaves a lot of open room for a continuation. And I remember watching that and I was like, I, where is this going to go? Because like, I don't, everything that I expected to happen happened. And then now there's like all these loose ends. And so season three is like basically following all of the loose ends. And not all of it is to my taste, but a certain amount of it is. Um, the character of Isaac, his storyline is actually like really interesting to me. Um, especially because um, season three really delves a little bit more into his character, who he is as a person, and what is driving him and there's some really cool stuff that happens involving that and then uh the season i mean the season follows a lot of characters there's trevor belmont the sort of main character of the show the de facto main character i suppose um and Saifa and their relationship that's delved into a lot and their storyline, there's not really that, I don't know, their storyline isn't interesting me that much right now. It's kind of like spooky things happen in a town, and what I was hoping they wouldn't do, they're doing. <laughs> uh, if you are watching Castlevania, you know what I'm talking about, probably. If you're not watching Castlevania, don't worry about it. But uh, what I was hoping they wouldn't do, they're doing. And I haven't watched the episode... The next episode that comes after um, a major magical uh, initiation, incantation, summoning, whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah, I haven't watched the episode after that, so I don't really know what's going to happen, but it seems like what I didn't really want them to do, they're going to do, and... I don't know, like, I 
maybe maybe the writer uh, maybe the maybe the writer of Castlevania a guy who's actually a pretty good pretty good writer Warren Ellis um he's written a lot of comic books that I have enjoyed in the past I actually need to make that arm shorter Warren Ellis usually does not disappoint he's a pretty decent writer and he likes to go into subjects and topics of my interest uh which is why you find a lot of in castlevania there's a lot of uh background lore that goes that involves alchemy and uh like demonology and stuff like that and does a pretty good job with it too but um he's done a pretty decent job overall in the series like in the overall series he's done a pretty decent job and so i'm kind of like okay if you do what i think you're doing i'm giving you a chance i'm giving you a chance but man you really need to like do something interesting with it and not just like have seasons one and two play out again um because that would be boring so my concern is that the rest of season three of castlevania and what would probably be season four would be like the new star wars trilogy which is replaying old events out but with slight you know altercation or alterations um we'll see now why was i talking about castlevania uh i was talking about stories right and oh right so yeah i don't i don't particularly like to give away spoilers to stories i enjoy I enjoy seeing people surprise when things happen. There was a, a major event that happened in uh, this week's tra episode of Trailer Park Warlock, which was released yesterday. And it made me happy to see people's reactions. A lot of people were very surprised by what happened to Point 2. And it, I, like, I like it when the reaction that i the reactions that i read are what i was expecting and hoping would happen um it really surprised a lot of people uh a lot of people were i think their opinions about point two as a character uh changed a little bit or altered a little bit and or just you know deepen their further appreciation of him as a character which i am still trying to here's the thing about Pontu. he is as a villain he's not really a villain he's more like an antagonist but he's not even really an antagonist but he's not really a stand-in as a hero i mean the guy is like a narcissist uh alcoholic really has betrayed the trust of his friends in major ways um he's not like a great guy right he's a very more like amoral chaotic sort of character who is first and foremost invested in his own uh in his own freedom and that does make him an interesting character to me and it seems like it makes him an interesting character to other readers and it's curious because i haven't i can't think of too many stories where something like this happens and on the one hand i feel really happy about that because i wanted to write something that was sort of unique in this season, every season, I want to try and write something that's sort of unique. And like, when I'm writing Trailer Park Warlock, and I've been trying to, th I've been thinking about this and how I'm going to try and approach each season. I want to do things. I want to write things that are outside of the norm 
of storytelling. And sometimes I do that well and sometimes I don't. Um, sometimes I go into old formats, but I'm trying to avoid that as much as possible. I already don't like the way that belt looks. I'm gonna have to adjust it. Um, yeah, you know, I'm just trying to do what I can to do something different and new, which is easier said than done. It's a really hard thing to do, um, especially because What was I trying to say? Um, why is it hard to do? That's what I was thinking. I, I kind of got caught on that thought. Like, why is that hard to do? What am I doing differently? I guess the main thing that I'm trying to do differently is to just like not think about or not concentrate on how much I can make a story that's like other stories. I'm certainly using material that is like references other stories. Like a lot of <laughs> something I appreciated was that a lot of people caught the uh, Castlevania Cynthia in the Night references that <laughs> Pontu was casually throwing about in this week's episode and I definitely love referencing other things and giving those little, you know, winks or subtle references or whatever to other, um, you know, other pieces of culture. But I feel like that's different from like story formatting. Like, I'm trying my best to not make Star Wars. Which actually is like way easier said than done uh, because so many stories are pretty much Star Wars. And I am attempting to like write in a way that is more in line with with like a Hayao Miyazaki style of writing. Which ultimately, I mean, means I'm still kind of going by a format, but it's a format that hasn't really been given a lot of uh, attention, quite frankly. Um, trying to go away from the general emotional beats that a story is expected to go. Those are all my ambitions, all my all my attempts. Sometimes I do it well, sometimes I don't. Um, we'll know better at the end of season two, but we have to get there first. All right, let's see how this looks. I don't like the way that feather looks. Daggum. Looks better. You have to clean that up. I think so. Let's change that. One of these days, I want to have music on these recordings. Um, I have to actually find some music. We'll get there. Just something to fill up these pauses when I'm kind of thinking to myself and being all quiet like. All right, I'm going to. Uh, All right, that's fine. That works. 
All right, so I'm going to delete these two layers, make a new layer. I don't need them. I don't. Um, yeah, I'm just going to do that because I want to merge this layer down so it's not a vector layer anymore. And time to flatten color. Let's see. Always a challenge trying to, oops. Always a challenge trying to figure out what colors to go with. Mm, I do want the vampiric look. Just going in and flatten real quick. Try not to overthink it. awful color. <laughs> uh, that's not even really any better. Um, let's see. Maybe? I may just end up changing this whole palette in a second, but uh, I won't know until I have everything colored and flatted in what have you. Hmm. See, like, I was kind of thinking maybe that would look better. Oh, yeah. Okay. Great. Go with a uh, black or a dark and yellow palette. That looks even better. All right, and then I'm gonna make the hat also this dark color. It's not really black, but gets interpreted as like a black or charcoalish type color. And then kind of a pink feather. And also, Control S. Let's save all this progress. <laughs> now, what do I want the background color to be? Mm -mm, not that. <laughs> nope. Uh. We'll figure it out. I'm I'm gonna end up I mean it's gonna end up being like some kind of gradient type color. That looks alright. Alright, we're gonna go with that now. Next. Let's go in. Airbrush. And I would like to create I don't think this is going to work though. Maybe it is.
Okay. You know what? I'm just going to go with it being kind of wild and weird. Because this panel is going to be reduced down so much that it's not even going to matter. It's really not going to matter. Ah, what happened? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Nothing happened, it's all right. Um, okay, that looks fine. It's about where I want it. And now I'm gonna go in and do more work than I need to do. Um, how do I wanna do this? I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the airbrush to imply that gummit I messed it up. Also, I didn't there we go. I didn't flat those buttons. Alright, so now I'm gonna take the airbrush again and I'm gonna take this color and just, that's too much. That's too harsh. Uh, I'm gonna go, okay, <laughs> hold on. Uh, <laughs> having a hard time with this one. Um, maybe. Maybe. So I set up a separate layer to do this, just in case I change my mind, not just like 100% commit. Um, this is looking good though, I like this. Mm -hmm. Too much. All right, I think that looks good. Uh, the only other thing I would consider, I'm not gonna, no, I'm not gonna do that. Um, this is good, this is done. All right, thank you all for hanging out. And uh, as I was saying earlier, I hope that you are staying healthy, staying well, um, stay safe out there. Be kind to each other and in all your projects and goals and ambitions. I hope that they're going well, and I will talk to you all again later. All right? See you all later. Bye.